live here at the American Postal Workers Union, the APWU, and uh, here in Washington, D.C., doing our show, and a special tip of the hat and thanks to the APWU for, for uh, having us here. And Mark Dimenstein is the president of the union. He's sitting right here with me. Mark, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here, and welcome to the American Postal Workers Union. Thank you. Tell me about your union. I know there's 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 also the Letter Carriers Union. Right. What's the difference between the two of you, and what what do you all do? Well, the American Postal Workers Union represents 200,000 of the 500,000 postal workers in the United States. We represent the people you would go buy stamps from in the retail units. We represent the people that sort the mail often during the night so it can get to your homes, and mm -hmm. apartments the next day. Uh, we represent the people that maintain the buildings and the machinery, and we represent the people that uh, drive the trucks and also the people that keep it all going with the information technology and the accounting side of the Postal Service. That's a lot. And there's a lot of proud, to, a lot of proud postal workers that we represent, very proud to serve the people of the country. Yeah, that's a, and a marvelous thing it is. So um, let's talk about the post office as an institution. Well, the, the post office is probably one of the few institutions we can identify that's actually in constant the U.S. Constitution. Yeah. Uh, and we think it's a wonderful national treasure. Uh, it's a very uh, important institution in terms of the democratic rights of the people. It's got a wonderful mission of providing universal service to everybody, no matter who you are, where you live, how much money you make, uh, what's our gender or color of our skin. Uh, and it's there to uh, serve the people. So we're big fans of protecting the public postal service. Yeah. It's truly a treasure that belongs to everybody. Uh, it runs today with no tax dollars. It runs off the patrons that uh, use it. Uh, and while it's facing some challenges of changes, it uh, certainly has the potential to be vibrant for generations to come. It needs to. Why is it that, that uh, so-called conservatives are always talking about destroying the post office when it was literally one of our founding institutions? Right. I mean, Ben Franklin, as I recall, started the, functionally started the first, well, uh, you know, in, in Philadelphia, the first post office. It's, Tom, it's, it's interesting. There are, actually, there are probably a lot of conservatives that do like the public postal service. For instance, in many small towns, it's the heartbeat yeah. uh, of, of that town. But the answer to your question, I think, is as simple as follow the money. So those who want to privatize the post office, the post office takes in about $70 billion a year of revenue. Whoa. So there's a lot of people that would like to get their fangs into that and be able to make a profit off of it, rather than have the post office continue in the main uh, as a nonprofit public service. It's not called the United States Postal Business. Mm -hmm. It's called the United States Postal Service for a good reason. Uh, so I, you know, I, I think the simple answer is that, that the privatizers would like to make profit where they can. Yeah. And of course, when something gets privatized, whether it's the postal service or public transportation or any, any other form of public service, uh, uh, those entities that are making a profit uh, are going to both reduce service generally and lower wages and benefits for the workers generally, which also spins off in a negative way into our communities. I, I, you know, I've heard the story, and, I, and you, you can reality check it for me, please, that one of the reasons that, I mean, going back to the Reagan administration, Republicans have been talking about privatizing the post office, is that it is the, uh, I guess, Walmart was the largest non-unionized employer in the country, and the post office is the largest unionized employer in the country. Or well, I, the, I, that's probably so some... Giant union busting right. scam, too. It is. It is, and uh, you know the, the fact is that the unions have not only provided uh, a better way of life for uh, postal workers uh, and our families, which, as I said, helps the communities as you, yeah. people have money to spend and can go out to eat at a restaurant or their kids can have uh, music lessons or join the sports teams and so on and, and, and uh, uh, so forth. But uh, the privatization is just going to lower the service time yeah. and that's that's what happens everywhere a public entity is privatized yeah, yeah. because then you've got to you got to pay for the for the for the uh, stockholders and the executives and everybody else yeah, yeah talk, talk about postal banking this is something that you know bernie yeah, sure. made kind of a keystone of his campaign and i haven't heard it much from anybody else well our union is uh, working very hard on what we call a campaign for postal banking so what you have in this country and the post office is well positioned to address a deep social need what you have in this country is a uh, a fact of life that some 60 to 100 million people 
don't have access to regular banking services. That's like a third of the country. A, a, a third of the country. And that's accelerating as well because banks are less inclined to be in neighborhoods, less inclined to be in small towns or, or, or urban neighborhoods and so on. And when they it's, are, if you're poor, the fees will just kill you. So it, the, the fees are killing people. So what we have is this development uh, over many decades of what we call the predatory payday lending industry or legal loan sharking. Right. And, and what we have found, and there are many people have been working on this around the country for years in, in their own cities and states, is that it's the, the, this alternative banking system that's preying on, particularly on the working poor, uh, takes in about $89 billion a year in fees and services. And the Office of Inspector General of the United States Postal Service, so this isn't coming from the American Postal Workers Union, uh, they actually did, did a study that showed the average person that makes $25,000 a year that gets stuck in this predatory lending industry, payday lending, check cash in pawn shops and so on and so forth, spends $2,400 a year in fees and services. That's 10% of their income. That's why it's such income. a profitable industry. So now here we have a United States Postal Service publicly in the public domain, public servants, accountable to the people, trusted, like no other agency is, office, is yeah. trusted in the, yeah. in, in the post office. Uh, that's in every town, 33,000 post offices. Mm -hmm. Why can't the post office, as they have done in the past, uh, why can't the post office basically establish uh, a public option for banking? Now, it's done all over the world. Yeah, I, I lived in Germany in the 80s, and you could, you could do Basic banking stuff. Basic banking. Office. And actually, the post office still today does some financial services, yeah, such money as money orders. orders. Yeah. And we would like to see that expanded. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no reason why the post office can't do paycheck cashing and people don't get ripped off just, pat, just cashing their paycheck. There's no reason that they can't put uh, have some kind of low-fee debit cards, uh, no-fee um, ATMs, money transfers both domestically, internationally. So we're part of a, a, a national campaign for postal banking. Mm -hmm. Although when we say postal banking, we're really talking about, at least in this moment, some expanded financial services. We think it would be great for the people of the country. It would serve a real social need. It would be great for the post office, because the right. post office is there to serve the people and bind the people together, and this is another great way to do it. Right. And we have a website, we meaning the Campaign for Postal Banking, for, for, for your listeners who are interested, it's called campaignforpostalbanking.org, and it's a coalition of 18 or 20 national groups working on this That's great, issue. and the four is spelled out, F-O-R, so F-O-R. Campaign for Public Banking dot For Postal Banking. Postal Banking. Postal Banking. Campaign, campaign for, for Postal, postal Banking. banking dot org. Yeah. yeah. That's great, that is great. Do you, and do you by the way, Tom, every time somebody hears about this, they think it's a great idea. Now, we don't talk to big-time banking CEOs. They may not right. think it's such a great <laughs> yeah, idea. They, they don't but the, the, the people on the street, the people we talk to yeah. in, in the workplaces, and our own members would really love to Do provide that kind of service. Do we have any champions in Congress for this? Yes. Uh, Senator uh, Warren mm -hmm. uh, from Massachusetts is, is a big champion. Uh, mm -hmm. Senator Brown of, uh, of, um, sure, Brown uh, of, Ohio. of Ohio, and of course, Senator Sanders has been uh, very keen on this uh, issue as well, and, and, and I'm sure there's many more, right. but those, those are the most notable. We're hitting a break. My, Mark Dem Demonstein, the president of the American Postal Workers Union, with us, and we're broadcasting live. In